This is Bart Lombardo from Panfish on the Fly. I have been getting a lot of requests lately to start doing some videos on some of the more popular patterns uh, that we have on Panfish on the Fly. Probably one of the most requested flies is a pattern I call the Creature. So we have a Creature in the vise. Uh, this is the brown version, the original version. I tie this in about ooh, seven or eight different colors these days. The uh, brown with the orange hotspot is by far the most popular. So that's what we're going to tie up for you today. So let's start off by getting this fella out of the vise and replace that with a Mustad 3366 in a size 8. The Mustad 3366 is a, a ring eye hook. It has the perfect dimensions for this fly. It's real easy to find, relatively inexpensive, so it makes a perfect hook for bluegill patterns. We're going to start off by putting down a layer of thread along the shank of the hook. We're going to wrap right back to the bend, remove our excess thread, and we're going to coat those thread wraps with a layer of super glue. What this super glue is going to do, it's going to adhere that mop fiber securely to the shank of the hook, prevent it from pulling out or rotating. So we press that mop fiber down onto the hook shank and secure it with a couple widely spaced but firm thread wraps. And then we'll lash down the front of the mop. So right now that mop is in there. It is not going to pull out. It's not going to rotate. Next, we're going to tie in some leg material. For the legs, I like to use a material called Flexi Floss. Flexi Floss has, has great action in the water. It's very durable, holds up well to fish teeth. I have uh, two pieces of Flexi Floss in my hand, about three inches long. I'm just going to fold them in half around the thread, and I'm going to lash those two down, two pieces of Flexi Floss down to my side of the hook, and then I'll take two of those fibers, bring them over to the other side of the hook, and lash them down here. So what we end up with is fibers on both sides of the hook. And they will create the legs of the fly. Now I'm going to cover up the thread wraps there with a little dubbing. I'm using a synthetic dubbing for this pattern. So a little bit of dubbing wax on the thread will help those uh, slippery fibers in here. I've selected a bright orange color. What I'm looking for is a little contrast, a uh, little bit of a hot spot on this fly. So I'm going to take that orange dubbing and I'm going to apply it to my thread. And I'm just going to wrap that rope of dubbing directly over those thread wraps, covering them up. It's okay, I want to keep this dubbing a little loose. I don't want a real tight rope because I want to tease some of those fibers out. I'm going to begin to brush some of those fibers back as I wrap. And if need be, I can go at this with a, a dubbing brush and tease out a few more of those fibers. Just like that, and we'll stroke all those fibers back. To finish the fly, we're gonna put a, a bit of hackle up at the front of it. I've chosen a feather from the rump of a pheasant. You could also use a large hen feather. What you're looking for is a feather that has some long fibers that are very flexible, give good action in the water. I simply uh, tied that in by the tip and I don't even have to cut that tip off. I can just stroke it back. And I'm going to fold those fibers back. And as I wrap around the hook shank with each wrap, I'm just going to stroke them to the rear. Two or three turns is all you need. And then we'll secure that stem. Don't worry if you have a few fibers facing forward like I do here. We'll be able to easily clean all that up. Sorry for bumping the camera.
All right, next step and the final step. I'm using a half hitch tool to push those fibers back. You could just as easily do it with your fingers, but a half hitch tool, tool keeps my, my fat fingers out of the frame. A couple thread wraps to coax those back into shape, and then we're gonna build up a small thread head. You can see I still need a few more thread wraps to keep those fibers facing rearward. I have that in place now. And we're gonna finish up with a whip finish. It's a five or six turn whip finish to secure that thread. And the final step is to protect those thread wraps at the head of the fly. You could use head cement. I prefer uh, a UV resin. I have a solar res bone dry here, which is my UV resin of choice. And I'm using a squeeze bottle with a small needle applicator, and that allows me to put that resin exactly where I want it. Solar Res Bone Dry is uh, one of the few resins out there on the market that does dry absolutely tack free if you use the right light with it. You need a high intensity UV torch to set that resin. It only takes a couple seconds. That resin is now dry. Fly is done. Putting some sort of resin or head cement is important on these patterns. I'm not a big fan of head cement in general. I, most of my flies that I tie, I don't use any adhesives. But when it comes to bluegill flies, you have the opportunity to catch a lot of fly, excuse me, a lot of fish on a single fly. So make those flies as durable as you can. So that's what you have there. That is the creature. That is to date has been the most requested pattern for me to uh, do a video of. As you can see, it's very simple, very easy to tie. You can knock one out in just a couple of minutes. The Creature. I hope you enjoyed it.